Hey everyone, in this segment I'm going to be talking to you about how to paint a color wheel and uh, I think I want to go ahead and show you what the um, final looks like because it's kind of nice to see what we're going to get when we're finished. So this is what a finished color wheel looks like and this one over here is kind of the basic design of the color wheel that we're going to be painting in this class. Uh, the only thing that's different is that I kind of kind of went to the, kind of the extra level and decided to go ahead and blend each of these sections and um, if you feel like doing that it's a little bit of extra work and skill to create that very blended color wheel um, but if you feel more comfortable with it doing the more simplistic method in each of these is going to be um, these little segments will be a separate color so basically this is the design of the color wheel and these are so invaluable just for um, referencing things like, for instance, later on we're going to be learning about complements. That's colors that are direct opposites on the color wheel. And so whenever you need to um, know that, you can always just kind of glance at that color wheel. I have one up in my studio, and they're just very helpful. So um, I want to show you the colors that we're going to be working with for the color wheel. And... Uh, First one is going to be one of our primaries, and that is lemon yellow. There it is, isn't that just gorgeous? Okay, and this is more of a cooler yellow, and then next to it we have Indian yellow. See how very different they are? This one is more of a warmer yellow. And just make sure you always rinse your brush out when you're using the color yellow because it's really easy to contaminate it. We also are going to be using two reds. Scarlet Lake. Right there, isn't that beautiful? I love that red. And the other one is going to be Permanent Rose. just want to show you what that looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? And you can see it's automatically a more cooler red. And finally, we'll take a look at our prim other primary, which is our blues. And this is going to be cobalt blue. So here's our cobalt blue right there. And the other one is going to be phthalo blue. You can see the difference between those two blues. So you may ask, well, why do I need to have two of every primary? And the reason is, is because of the color bias. Um, these colors, um, even though they're both blues, they lean more to one side of the spectrum. And so um, you can see that this one here is almost more of a greenish blue. So it's cooler. And this one over here, our cobalt blue, is a little bit um, warmer. <clears throat> Same thing with the reds. You've got more and more of a of a, a warmer red here and a cooler red, our permanent rose. And again, with our yellows, this is more of a cooler yellow. And this one over here, you can see it's more of an orangey yellow. It's it's more warmer. And when we when we're mixing colors. It's a lot different than, say, if you're looking at the colors of a rainbow because it's actually dealing with light and this is dealing with actual pigment. And so in order to get effective color mixing, you really do need to have two of these that are leaning to um, either the cooler or the warmer side of the spectrum. And um, this is something that's a good, it's a good thing to know from the very beginning and it's going to make sense the more that we get deeper into color mixing. Um, throughout these lessons. Okay, so I want to show you what else you're going to need for this class and there will be a place to download this. It's basically a printout that shows you the pattern for um, how to organize your color wheel and you can go ahead and trace this if you want onto your watercolor paper and uh, I just want to show you how it's organized. See right in here we do actually have our primaries, our red, blue and our yellow. But I've actually taken this to an extra step and divided each of these little triangles into two parts. That's because you are going to put um, 
one yellow on this side that for instance you might want to put your lemon yellow here and go ahead and put your Indian yellow on the other side and so the same thing with the blue you're going to put two of your blues here and two of your reds and then when we go to the next step and I will actually be demonstrating this for you as well so they'll make it perfectly clear um, you'll be taking some of your yellow and your red and creating an orange and then you'll go over here and just paint in the orange area the same with um, when you do your yellow and your blue and you create a green that'll be the following step and the same thing with the blue and red creating a violet so you want to download that because it gives you a really good guide of where to put your colors and then we'll put this to the side and I'll just show you here is a color wheel that is already drawn out on watercolor paper so what I like to do is put this in pencil and then I go back and make sure that I erase very lightly over the pencil lines just so that they're not really dark because um, I want to have nice faint lines so it doesn't show through so much with the uh, watercolor paint because watercolor paint is uh, very light and transparent um, and you can always actually erase those lines after you're completely done so but to start with we want to make sure that they're not too dark okay so the first step is that we're going to go ahead and start mixing up our yellows and I'm going to use lemon yellow and just paint it in this first side of the triangle and I'm also using the point of my brush and running that along the edge and that helps me get a nice straight edge so in here just kind of pulling that paint down and then kind of filling the triangle in so there we have the lemon yellow you're also going to find out a lot by just painting these charts they really do teach you a lot about using your brush and um, just teaching you brush control which is basically just practicing you know using your brush with watercolor and you get better at it and you more get more confident as you just do it and so I think these uh, charts are quite helpful for that they also teach you things about drying time with watercolor which is another thing that is um, really useful foundation in watercolor now we can already see I have the lemon yellow in here so if I was to go ahead and paint the other yellow which is Indian yellow right next to it probably gonna run into problems because it's going to bleed so what I'm gonna do is rinse my brush off really well and this is also an approach that I do for paintings if sometimes if I don't want another color to bleed into another one I'll just work on another area that's not next to it and so the other color that we want to work on is going to be our blue which is right in here and the blue that we want to have next here is going to be cobalt blue cobalt blue just making sure that I get a nice consistency so it flows on the paper there we go so isn't that just beautiful these are really fun to create these two and I once again you can see how I'm just pulling my paint the tip of my brush right across that line and then pulling it downwards a few strokes and then dipping my brush back into the water again so get a nice even wash just pull it across there you go so there is our cobalt blue okay so I've allowed the cobalt blue to kind of dry off a little bit and also the lemon yellow is pretty dry so now we can take some of our phthalo blue 
and just begin to mix this on the palette and then start applying it. And just being really careful just to get a nice straight line across here. If it really helps, you can also turn your paper around because sometimes you can get a better angle when you do that. If you need to change brushes, sometimes using a smaller brush might be a little bit easier for you. I'll show you what I mean. This is my smaller brush, so I can come in here and really get a nice straight line when I'm switching to that small and more detailed brush right in here just pulling that paint across sometimes just doing a few strokes so that we get a nice even wash and just pulling it all the way across here. Okay, so there we have our phalo and our cobalt. So, our lemon yellow is nice and dry, so we can put the Indian yellow next to it. Dipping my brush in the water so I get a nice consistency of paint. Like a milky consistency, I think, is what works for this. I'm using my smaller brush right now. And I'm also resting my finger here on the paper. That just gives me really good leverage for getting nice straight lines. Just pulling that paint across and just filling it in. Just pulling that all the way down. The cobalt blue is, is dry, so I can go ahead now and start painting in the permanent rose, which is our red. Getting a good consistency there, just adding enough water so it's almost like a, kind of seems like a milky consistency, because I want to get a nice darker shade of the watercolor, we want to get this more full strength. You can always dip your brush just on the tip if you just need a little bit more water. Once again, just pulling that paint across. And you can, you can see how much these exercises just teach you a lot about working with watercolor and not just about color, but also handling the techniques of handling watercolor, which are really important because they help you get more confident, and the more confident you are, the more creative you are going to be in your paintings. Just pulling that across. Okay, so there we have our permanent rose, which is our cooler red. I want to make sure that these two colors are completely dry before you go ahead and put the other red in, which is going to be Scarlet Lake. If you have to, you can use a hair dryer, and that will help speed up the drying process. Next, we're going to paint in our Scarlet Lake. Just going to fill that whole area in. This is a really pretty red. It's like a fire engine red. D 
definitely more warmer than that other red. You can see the difference when you put them next to each other. It really helps you recognize the color bias. So sometimes people will say, is red a warm or a cool color? Okay, so normally we go, oh yes, it's definitely a warm color. But within reds, you can see how some are warmer and some are cooler. So it's very relative. And learning these little subtleties will really help you a lot when you go to painting and color mixing. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going with that color, just pulling it down, just making sure I even up any of these little edges. So if you run into problems where maybe you didn't let this dry enough and it starts to bleed, you can always just take a paper towel and lift the color out as much as you can. I wouldn't dab it, I would just push it into the paper and lift it out and then let it dry off completely and try to see if you can, you know, maybe go over it with another layer of paint. Use your hair dryer and that's the best way to be really careful about these layers drying is if you're not sure, then use the hair dryer because that will really make sure that you get a nice dry area before you put the other color next to it. Okay, so here we have our primaries, two versions of each primary.